Okay. <laughs> Gotta get all the nasty noises out of me. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, I've been trying to fix this tape recorder here, because I've got a completely dead channel here. Now, before it went completely dead, it was kind of intermittent, so what I thought of doing was taking these potentiometers out, taking them apart, and cleaning them up, then putting them back together and putting them back in, and that's when the channel went completely dead. Absolutely no response out of it whatsoever. Well, if you saw my live stream, you know that I spent almost two hours trying to figure out what was wrong with this thing, and I forgot one of the most important rules of debugging electronics, which is thou shalt check voltages. So, I've just been through checking all the voltages on this board, so check that the supply voltages were good, and they are. Each op amp is getting the voltages it should do, and then I decided to check the voltages at each of the inputs and outputs on these little chips. So this board here runs on 10 volts. It's a single rail supply. So on each of the op amps inputs and outputs we should have half of the supply voltage. And when I check this one right here, everything on this side checked out, it was about where it should be. But on this side, it's all out of whack. So on the non-inverting input, it was about where it should be, but the inverting input is down at around 2 volts, which is way lower than it should be, and we're getting about 9 volts coming out of the chip, where it should be about 5.5. So, this pin here on this potentiometer goes to SID pin on the chip, or goes to the non-inverting input. I mean the inverting input, I always get those two mixed up. But this one goes to the inverting input on the chip. And as you can see, we're only getting 2 volts there. Which was stupidity on my part, because when I put this potentiometer back in, there's a little tab that I forgot to fold back in. And that's shorting out against that resistor. So, let's just put the meter onto that pin again. You might be able to see that the voltage is way lower than it should be if the meter would stop auto-ranging. Right. So I'm going to bend this resistor away from that tab. Which is easier said than done. Look at it now. 5.24 volts. Right where it should be. Right, so now it's time for the test. First of all, I'll plug this cable into input 2 and I'm going to touch the end of the wire. And see if the meters respond. Okay, so channel 2 is working. Now, let's see if channel 1 works. It's plugged in. Cross your fingers. Ta da! It lives!